I want to quickly go over positive culture and why it's good for everyone. Some people think you can either create really good gymnasts and good gymnastics or have a great positive culture. That's not true. It's not an either or situation. So we're going to go over a little why. First of all, there's some things that can get negative super, super quickly when you're watching a rotation, especially with some team gymnasts. You're watching and you see lots of mistakes that aren't typical for them. And you're like, why aren't they able to do these skills? They sometimes appear like there's little, maybe even no effort going on. So I don't know if that's ever happened to you, but you ask them to take their turns, take some turns, get some practice and they'll get better and they just don't do it. And sometimes you see that they sabotage their success. So they're about to land something really well and they're just sit it down or they don't try to stand it up and you're wondering what's going on there. And sometimes they're doing little routines, a fall turns into two or three or more and you're like, huh, they might have fallen once by accident, but they shouldn't be falling two or three or four times. What's going on? And also they seem to have a lot more talent than they're displaying. And so what are people going to think about you? I'm a bad coach. So you get worried about that. And you want to do, instead, you want to say, what's going on in your life? Like, what is going on in school? Are they having a fight with their best friend? Are they, their parents mad at them? Are they worried about grades? What's going on that makes them feel lower self-esteem? Because it comes down to low self-esteem. Because when you have that, you usually don't care about something. So we want to try to dive into that. And why are they doing that? And if they're not taking a lot of turns, even though you've asked them, you go, well, what's going on? What's going on with them? So you want to take a little bit of time to talk to them. Kids with self-esteem sometimes will give up and they also sometimes don't believe they deserve the success, so they sabotage the turns. And a perfectionist type of brain, one fall might be the exact same as 10 to them in their mind. So once they've messed up, they've messed up and one turn fall can turn into another fall. Also, you know if they tried, they'd be successful, so you're just asking them to give that effort and what it seems like is they just don't respect you or care about you, but really, it's not about you. It's about them and their low self-esteem. So we have to work on those things. Change your role. Don't join a fight with them. You are a tool for them to use. You are not somebody to fight with. So we want to make sure that that's what's going on. You want to also give them variety, choices. You want to tell them you are on their side to get them to their goal. So you're not saying, no, you can't do this. You know, you can't do that. And you're, you're, you're talking to them and you're a partner with them to get them to what their goals are and try to stop talking at them. Like, please, we need them to be involved with it, especially the team athletes. What are your goals? What do you want to be able to do? And you want to talk with them about their goals and how you can aid them because it is their choice. Okay. If you're complaining, it's always these kids. It's these, this problem group, then it's probably you and not the kids. So, the first tip I have is have a plan. Go in there with ideas and a plan and an assignment and a rotation. It'll make things go so much better. And secondly, purpose-driven assignments. So we've heard of a purpose-driven life. Make it a purpose-driven assignment that isn't just about getting better, which is what they should do. But we all know that that doesn't always happen exactly in uh, sports. Sometimes kids don't have that internal motivation. So we have to make the assignment have different parts to it so that they feel driven and motivated to keep going. So we like to say a meal, maybe an appetizer, which is warming up, get them going, moving right away into the rotation. Then try to have your main course with some side dishes. So the main course is like, what do we want to do? We want to accomplish this many routines or do that. And we want these side dishes, which are side stations. And then our dessert, which is maybe a show turn or a a fun game or something fun at the end. Um, we also have an impacts assignment. So each letter of impacts equals a different way of coaching. And we've gone over that in other um, different presentations, but I is in a row, partner play is the P, call a coach over to watch, etc. So have these as part of your plan. So you have a purpose-driven assignment. Also, this works really good with rec kids and, and lower level kids. Grab a piece, grab a card, even the older level kids, they do that. The older kids in uh, upper levels will keep grabbing a card each each number. Maybe you're doing uh, flip flops on beam or you're doing cartwheel stuff. Grab a piece, grab a card every time you stick it. But every time you get an ace, you get to go play connect four for your team and you're yellow and they're red. And who's going to get the ace first and who's going to keep going? So those kind of things can be really fun. We have a big card stack that we use. So use those pieces and cards or any way in any shape you can, way you can to get kids moving. 
Uh, kids sometimes not caring about quality, then add a show turn. Go, okay, on this turn, you're getting bonus 10 points if your legs are straight on your back handspring or whatever it is you're trying to look for. So you add that care into it and that quality into it instead of just speed, which could sometimes happen. And then reduce lectures. Stop talking so much. So many coaches love to hear themselves speak. Try to get them moving and make it about them and then listen. Do a lot more listening. So that's really difficult for coaches, but that's what we need to do more of. Feelings. So quickly, this is my uh, number one thing in all of a gym school owner. If you create good feelings, you absolutely grow your gym like crazy. And financial success is there too. If you can do that, you're going to have more enrollment and more happy customers that tell their friends. So I have a few little pictures. My little uh, dog is a puppy and his little cute face. If you create these kinds of feelings out there, you have people who remember your gym positively and want to come back. But in, in contrast, if you have these kinds of feelings, they don't want to come back. So you have to make sure from the very top uh, tier program all the way down to the lowest rec level or front desk or birthday parties or anything that the feelings, feelings, feelings are the most important thing. So keep working hard out there, guys, and I hope this helped you.